How can all of these ideas help with cancer suppression? So let's let's go back to the beginning and ask what 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 cancer is. So I think um you know asking why there's cancer is the wrong question. I think the right question is why is there ever anything but cancer? So so in the normal state you have a bunch of cells that are all cooperating towards a large scale goal. If that process of cooperation breaks down and you've got a cell that is isolated from that electrical network that lets you remember what the big goal is, you revert back to your unicellular lifestyle. As far as, now think about that border between self and world, right? Normally when all these cells are connected by gap junctions into an electrical network, they are all one self, right? That meaning that um, their goals, uh, they, they have these large tissue level goals and so on. As soon as a cell is disconnected from that, the self is tiny, right? And so at that point, and so so people, a lot of people model cancer cell cells as being more selfish and all that. They're not more selfish. They're equally selfish. It's just that their self is smaller. Normally, the self is huge. Now they got tiny little selves. Now, what are the goals of tiny little selves? Well, proliferate, right? And migrate to wherever life is good. And that's metastasis. So that's proliferation and metastasis. So, so one thing we found, and people have noticed years ago that when cells convert to cancer, the first thing they see is they close the gap junctions. And it's a lot like, I think it's a lot like that experiment with the slime mold, where until you close that gap junction, you can't even entertain the idea of leaving the collective because there is no you at that point, right? You're mind melded with this, with this whole other network. But as soon as the gap junction is closed, now the boundary between you now, now the rest of the body is just outside environment to you. You're just a, you're just a, a, a unicellular organism and the rest of the body's environment. So, so we, so we studied this process and uh, we worked out a way to artificially control the bioelectric uh, state of these cells to physically force them to remain in that network. And so then, then what that, what that means is that, um, nasty, um, mutations like KRAS and things like that, these, these really tough oncogenic mutations that cause tumors. If you, if you do them and then, but, but then, but then artificially, um, uh, control of the bioelectrics, you, 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 you greatly reduce tumor genesis or, or normalize cells that had already begun to convert you. Basically, they go back to being normal cells. And so this is another, much like with the planaria, this is another way in which the bioelectric state uh, kind of uh, dominates what the, what the genetic state is. So if you sequence the, the, you know, if you sequence the nucleic acids, you'll see the KRAS mutation. You'll say, ah, well, that's going to be a tumor. But there isn't a tumor because because bioelectrically you've kept the cells connected and they're just working on making nice skin and kidneys and whatever else. So so we've started moving that to um, to to human uh, glioblastoma cells and we're hoping for um, you know a patient in the future um, interaction with patients. So is this one of the possible ways in which we may quote uh, cure cancer? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think I think the actual cure. I mean, there are other technology. You know, Im immune therapy. I think it's a great um, technology. Um, chemotherapy. I don't think is a good is a good technology. I think we got to get get off of that. So chemotherapy just kills cells. Yeah. Ke well, chemotherapy uh, hopes to kill more of the tumor cells than of your cells. That's it. It's a fine balance. The the, the problem is the cells are very similar because they are your cells, and so if you don't have a very tight way of distinguishing between them, then uh, the toll that chemo takes on the rest of the body is just unbelievable. So, and uh, immunotherapy tries to get the immune system to do some of the work. Exactly. Yeah, I think that's potentially a very good, uh, very good approach. Um, if if the immune system can be taught to recognize uh, enough of of the cancer cells, that that's a pretty good approach. But I but I think but I think our approach is in a way more fundamental because if you can if you can keep the cells harnessed towards organ level goals as opposed to individual cell goals, then nobody will be making a tumor or metastasizing and so on.